Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. Today we're doing something with the Atari ST. I'm going to talk about that and then we'll come back here and I'll show you what we're going to do. So GoTex are great. They let you use a USB drive on your ST and have all your disk images on it. However, they don't let you play your big pile of old ST magazine disks and PD disks. So you get yourself an external floppy drive, which is pretty great. But some of these games need to boot from that disc, not that disc. So you're stuck in a quandary. Sometimes you want to boot from here. Sometimes you want to boot from here. So I'm going to show you how to install a switch and make a hardware mod in Atari ST so that you can flip those around at will whenever you need to. Let's get over to the Teardown Lab. So the first thing we want to do is get under the hood. And it's easy on this ST because I never keep the lid bolted down. Just to show you, we're looking for the AY chip because the AY chip is the one that controls the drive. So I'm going to put this bang here because the AY chip's right there. And we're going to zoom in real close. So I'm just going to undo some of my mods. So some of these are a bit non-standard. But that's fine. I'm going to pull them out of the way. But that is the AY chip. And because I'm being all professional like, in fact, does this even come off the board? No. This is one of those ribbon cables, by the way, which only comes off one end. Let's get that out of the way. I'll show you. That right there is the Yamaha AY chip. And it does control the drives, I say. Do you want to use the internal, external? That's the guy that's doing all the business. And I'm guessing the reason is there's a bit of spare GPIO on this. So I've marked out on the uh, this diagram of the chips. That's the chip there located that way. These are the two pins we're interested in because the drives have a chip select line effectively. So all the address buses are connected, but then it twiddles this sort of chip select or an enable to tell which drive it's talking to. I'm talking to you now. I'm talking to you now. I'm talking to you now. Exactly like that by twiddling these pins 19 and 20. A, B, A, B. So if you imagine what we want to do, if you want to swap it so the external drive is treated as drive A, you kind of want to flip those, flip them over. So what I've got here is another thing I've drawn up and you can have a little close look and uh, I've done all of the science. So we don't have to worry about that right now, but that's your YM2149 and these are the two pins that we've marked out, 19 and 20. And you need to put this to one of these switches. And I can't, I, for the life of me, uh, double pull, double throw, I want to say. Don't worry about it, though. What it means is that it looks like this. And I'll put a link down below to a suitable switch or something to my shop or whatever. So if you can imagine, when the switch is in one particular position, and by the way, I have a switch right here, and I'll show you that in a minute. Pin 20, the signal from there goes straight to drive A as per usual and pin 19 goes straight to drive B as per usual. That's what you what it does normally. But if you've got a switch and then you hook these up this way, if you put this throw down that way, so this goes from here to here and this goes from here to here, the signal from pin 20 will go now to drive B and the signal from pin 19 will go now to drive A. It's that simple. So what we have here is a suitable switch and I've got another diagram for you, all full of the diagrams, real nice today. If you look here in the bottom right corner, ignore that one for now, just the bottom right corner, that's the switch underneath and you can see the pins in the middle are common and you're moving a slider between these two, top two pins for example on this side and these bottom two pins, you're sliding this up and down so you've either got green connected to white or green connected to black and that's one side or you've got red connected to black and red connected to white so that's effectively if you imagine this is your chip now and this is the original tracks on your pcb if you can cut into those tracks and you have a red green black and white wire and you wire it up to this switch this will effectively let you swap everything around and that's exactly what we're going to do. And uh, fortunately, I found the right wires with the right colours and everything. So we're just basically going to make this. And I've been doing a little bit of reconnaissance under the old Atari ST hood. Don't worry, we're going to. Pu I'm putting the soldering iron on. I'm not going to talk any longer. We're going to do something. And uh, my idea is, you see, is to mount this switch on this bit of Vera board. And it doesn't have the same pitch, unfortunately. So we're going to be doing a bit of hackery to do that. So the switch is kind of like that. And then I'm going to move over. 
where the cartridge slot is because I didn't want to cut the case and I discovered that this switch fits nicely in there nice and sweet so my idea is basically to fit that onto there and I'll put something on here to stop the uh, contacts from shorting out on this metal case and the switch is just going to live underneath there really and I can switch it by just rubbing my finger along the cartridge port because I don't really use the cartridge port much it's up to you really if you wanted to you could probably even cut the plastic so it's really short I don't think you're going to be doing a lot of switching on this basically and then we're going to run the wire from here back to the chip now the chip end is the tricky end so we've got to make something this end and we've got to do a bit of trickiness fitting it over there so what I'm going to do is let's make the switch bit first because that's probably the simplest and then the last bit is just fitting it up right first things first we need to prepare our switch and um, because we're going to attach it to this piece of Vera board and uh, it is a totally different pin pitch we're going to actually stick it on the front surface mount style so I'm going to have to make a modification so I'm just going to place a cut down the middle of the board try not to cut my fingers off and if you've got a PCB Vera board um, drill the proper way of course for doing it which I'm just I'm just looking maybe I actually do have one somewhere <laughs> um, use that instead because that's definitely a safer way of doing this but I don't I don't do safe so you have to just cut enough to make sure they're not going to have a bridged contact so there's a nice clean piece there a nice clean one there hopefully let's go get that foil off there's definitely no way anything's going to short over here and annoyingly I've still not managed to locate my bloody scalpel blades so uh, I'm just using these dodgy Poundland craft knives and they've got this sort of tendency to either slip or snap as you're using them so if you're using craft knives please take extra care I can it I can it be responsible I don't want that on my conscience. Right, almost there. Look at that, one more piece. One wafer thin piece, right. So, that's pretty clean. There's a bit of gunk in there. What I might just do, I've got one of these brushes. I'm just going to give it... Oh, he's been playing with that. Give it a little bit of a polish. What's really cool, what I could have done today, and I didn't because I'm a moppet, I actually found my ferric chloride and I could have actually hand drawn a PCB and hand drilled one, but we might do that another time. Today we can use this technique. So I'm just going to bend all of these pins now outwards. So I'm just going to put my... Let's hope this doesn't damage them. So I'm just going to put the handle of my tweezers there and just bend them outwards to get them all even and that could have the danger though of course of putting strain on the internal mechanisms of the switch so hopefully that'll all be okay when we're done just to push it down on the deck Urgh. they are certainly very flat now and we're going to solder it to here let's see if we can find a okay so that's going to be good you let definitely shorts no actually no that won't short out that'll be okay Got to make sure the middle pin. So if the middle pin is aligned, the other pins, the outer pins technically could short out, but I think we're okay on that one. Right, dead center. We're going to go with the dead center. In fact, I'm just going to do the middle one so I can move that around till we're happy. Just have a look at it. Different angles. That looks pretty good. That's going to be okay for us the other side get lots of opportunities with the outer pins because they're bridging two sets of tracks so it's gonna be good and strong it's not going to go anywhere in operation this thing no matter how ham-fisted you are ah, a bit of extra solder on that one problem so there you go that's that so if you look at our diagram we're going to go back to our diagram we do have our colors here 
and we have our piece of wire ready, pretty prepared. So we're going to go for red and green as the centre pins, and then black and white as one of the other pairs. So perhaps I should have been a bit smarter and left these longer, but I didn't. So you've got options. I think if you can, pop them in from the top. That's going to be probably the best way, really. Do it from the top. And I can just about see them poking through. There's our green one. So I'm going to use an extra pair of hands that I don't have and try to tack that on there. And if you do have one of those springy helping... Actually, well, <laughs> you do have one of those helping hand doofers. That's going to help you out a lot with this sort of thing. Let's try using it. I don't particularly like them because they're just a bit crude, but in this case, I think they're, we found the perfect use case for them. So just poking that wire up through. Now, it may entirely be possible that this mod could work on Atari Falcon. I'll have to check a schematic on that one. That's one. And it certainly is going to work on other machines of this sort of era. I can't imagine they would have used too many different ways of uh, implementing the, the drive select things. Right, let's get that there. You can see just the wire poking through there. Just going to touch that there. Oh, it's a bit too dry for me. Like a little bit more solder on there. Done. So that's our red and our green wires. So you can see we've got black and white. We can just pop those on one end of the switch and we can sort of bridge them to the other side manually. So we don't, you know, we'll just hook these two up and then we'll put a little jumper wire across to each other side. The order doesn't really matter, by the way, of which one you put it in. It's, it's going to be basically drive A or B, drive B and you can kind of work that out after you've you know done fitting it all i mean unless you've you really got a need for it a to be on one direction and b on the other and even if they are wrong you can just switch flip the switch around you don't have to rewire anything so if you do care then uh, make sure you have a go at testing it before you you glue it down. If, you know, if you're going to fix this to your Atari ST somehow, glues or things like that, don't glue it down until you're happy. So the black wire here won't poke through because I've blocked the hole. Getting it aligned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pressure on the back while I heat the front so that it will just slide through and solder itself at the same time, and it has. There you go nicely done so that's that bit done we just need to do a couple of jumpers we can kind of do it on either side really you can do it on the front or the back depending on how careful we are let's do it on the front using hmm, let's see. building a kit the other day so we have a few bits and pieces of these sort of jumpery type wires so effectively you'd want to create a crisscross a Chris, a Chris Kringle. So you can do that with this one. Totally unshielded. It's not necessary on that one. I'm just going to poke it through. So now we've got that. I'm just going to trim the end. I don't know if this could act as a kind of a strain relief. I'm going to just see if I'm going to use it as a, almost, just as a contact and a strain relief at the same time. Just, you know, I think that's kind of cute. Let's do it. I'm looking at our, I'm looking at our white wire actually and thinking our white wire should have been over there. Mm. To work out if that's a, uh, an okay place to put it right now. If not, we'll uh, move it. Solder that guy down. Good. Mm -hmm. 
I think having that white there is probably okay. So we've basically hooked up, we've got the red, black and white. That's those three hooked up there and we've got the green. And then we've put a, a wire that's going from black over to this side, and that's the black. So we just need one more wire from going the white to the white on the other side. So that's the last bit, I'm just seeing if there's any kind of cute way of doing it, but there isn't really, we're just gonna have to use a piece of wire. Again, I've just got some regular bit of wire it's not, I'm not doing this pretty, by the way. This is just made out of scraps. The only thing that uh, I kind of had to buy to do this project is that switch itself. And I got a bag of a few of those. So I could put together some kits, but you can see I don't really even have the materials for kits here because I'm just using whatever I can find on the shelf. So we're gonna pop the wire into the white, right there. Make sure it's soldered pretty decently from the top. I didn't do a good job of that last one. So that's in like that. And we're just going to cross that one over. Cross your heart, hope to die. And that should poke through absolutely nicely. Yes, it does indeed. Good. Pretty neat. So we've got our switch right there and it's doing the whole crossover and a bit of a rat's nest there, ignore that. So the other end, you've got four wires. And if you wanna do a sanity check, get your meter out. I'm gonna do a whole meter and put it on continuity. And have a look at what we should be seeing. So at one point we should be seeing red and black joining. So if red and black are joined, <laughs> my probes, my probes are too unwieldy. Let's take the probe caps off. Right. So if we're going to join red and black. So if red and black are joined, white and green should be joined. That's basically what we're saying. And they are and the white, uh, the green doesn't attach to anything else. So and then if we switch the other way, we should have red and white working. So we're gonna do red and white. There's the red. I'm not hearing it. Yep, yeah, red and white. Should also be green and black. And that's green and black. Good. So our switch works. Now we have to then grab the ST onto the bench because now we're doing this sort of scary, scary tricky stuff. There it is, the legendary YM2149 chip, which is kind of also identical to the AY38910 chip. So for us, fortunately, the pins are in the same place, pretty much the same pin out. So the diagram works for us. So it's these two end pins. It doesn't really matter which one is which for our, our, our sort of needs. We know that one is drive a and one is drive B, wherever. And if we get our piece of wire that we've prepared earlier, we can see that we've got a little job ahead of us. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna attempt to bend up to cut these pins here, bend them up and then solder two of these wires. And that's the red and the green to the pins themselves. And then solder the other two wires which will be the black and the white onto the PCB underneath so you've got this quite tight here and you can probably go and cut tracks and do stuff too if you want to do that depends how squeamish you are about cutting into old components I mean this is possibly a risky way it's all just a case of access really I would advise getting some side cutters like this and cutting as low as possible so let's see if we can get all of our attention focused on making this cut right now. And this is not my good side cutters, by the way, so taking a bit of a risk using them. Right, so that's probably as, it's pinched. They're not cut, they're just pinched right now. 
And these are my good side cutters, but they do have that little thing in there for grabbing hold of the components, stop it flinging off. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect these. Makes them hard to get in there, that's for sure. I, it sounded like they, they cut there. I could hear the little click, click, click. So I've just got my tweezers and I'm just going to gently probe the end of that pin, see if I can bend something up. Not quite. Could be, could be my tweezer, so at the end of the day, not liking it. And being gentle, by the way, because there are tracks that are running around here. You don't want to scrape any of the PCB by accident and break a track. So there's a bigger job, and I can see ever so slight amount of uh, track scrapage there. So I'm be a bit careful. Don't exasperate it. So I think we've got one up now, and the other one is not just not quite cut through. So just a bit more. Come on now. Definitely looking like it wants to go. Come with me on a journey. So I'm trying to decide now, do we uh, solder these two pins first or do we solder the bits on the PCB? I think we'll do the PCB first because these will be in our way. So if you want to make it look pretty, you could put a bit of heat shrink on those. We'll get a bit of heat shrink, see how we can uh, try to make it look like a jog job that Jack Trammell would have been happy with in his Atari ST. We've got a tiny bit of the old heat shrink here. Just going to measure out an amount that will work for us. It's all kind of limited by the uh, length of the wire we've got cut off, but these will these will be all right. Get those dosed, those dosed and ready. So just heating the PCB. Remember, there is an end of a pin in those. Don't um, overdo it because that pin will drop down. So we've got black and white wires to go onto the PCB under where the pins were. So just folding them all back, make sure you've got them nice. You don't want it to don't want any mechanical stress caused by the wires not being dressed properly. I'm going to try it without tweezers for the first one and then see if tweezers are recommended or not. Yeah, I would I would recommend tweezers, but I'm also going to recommend trimming those right down. So I'm just taking them down to about about a mil. They're about a mil long. I'm just going to try to apply a tiny bit more solder. When you're when you're doing this yourself, I know you can't get a good look at what I'm doing on the on the PCB side, but you'll see what I'm doing on the, when I get to the ground to the top way. Um, you'll know when you've got the right amount of solder basically, it's just going to be a nice little blob and that's pretty much bonded that white wire in and yeah, the tweezers do help actually, if you've got the tweezers definitely use them oh that's good that's a good solder in there very nice, very pleased with that that's worked out um, before we go any further, though, let's tin those two legs sticking up on that chip. So another way you could do this, which would be quite nice too, is you could take the whole chip out and put in a uh, chip socket and then engineer all of this into the socket. That works too. And then you've not really molested a nice original chip. But you know, this is my, this is my scrapper. ST. This is the ST with all of the experiments and the slightly knackered looking case. Okay, kind of delaminated my tinning there, not happy about that, but not bothered enough to go back and fix it. Good, that'll work. So then the final thing, of course, slip the heat shrink over the ends nicely. We're going to get our hot air blower, touch that up. Like so. so. Just to show you the overview where it lies, just right there. Um, 
you've got a bit of extra wire. I've made sure this wire is pr plenty long and the idea being, because it's going to go to this right hand side of the case and just gives me the opportunity to see how I can sort of fold it around so there's no strain. In fact that's really quite good, there's very little strain. If you can jam it between a couple of components all the better but yeah that's pretty strain free. Uh, you've got the option, you could put a little bit of arrow die or something in there, you know, keep it down. But I'm going to be, I'm kind of okay with this right now. I feel that it's not going to be subject to too many things. So what I'm going to do is just pop my drive back in on this side. We don't need to do anything on this side of the Atari ST anymore now. We're kind of done with that. Um, which way around? I think that goes that way. Always these genders on these floppy drives always used to confuse me. Never confused. And park that down where it's going to go. And you remember, this is the mod. I've got the mouse mod that comes through to here and stuff on there. So this is the heavily modded ST. So we're going to put the wire here just under the keyboard area. Plenty of wire, plenty of space. It's all, it's all done that way on purpose for those boys and girls watching at home wanting to play along. There, that's the keyboard in. Let's shunt it over, see if we can get some room here to that angle. So the main uh, idea at this point now as well, we're going to put some tape over here. Uh, and I'm probably going to use this 3M type tape, which is a, it's an adhesive tape. And it will also act as an insulator because it's foamy. So you want to make sure it's a bit insulated when you're working with that because we do have live contacts on the bottom of the switch. So I'm going to pop that right there like that. Fat look at that one's poking right through. Be careful of that. Might go in and trim that one back down in a moment. And you can buy uh, foam tapes, which are just really quite thick foam as well. You've got all sorts of options here. I'm just trimming down now. We now we're aware things will poke through that are sharp on that side. Let's just trim any ends of wires. It's not going to cause probably us a major catastrophe but it will probably uh, end up with your drives not being happy complaining not knowing if they're drive A's or drive B's or worse trying to be drive A and drive B at the same time get that there good that's better and that's better you could probably do a couple of layers of this I'm just going to trim the, the excess this is weird stuff this, it's uh, it's kind of, it's really tenacious when it wants to be, um, and, but until it's sort of stuck down and compressed and, and it sort of cures a bit, it's just really floppy, weird, foamy stuff. You'll see now when I'm trying to do it. It's not like the kind of foam tapes that you buy to go around your window, sort of draft excluder tapes. It's... Come on you fiddly foot. Fecker. Yeah, come on. Once you get it to bite, it's fine, but just get in that first corner. You can see even these PCB uh, surface mount tweezers are having trouble just grabbing that. Stop making things difficult. I took my finagling offline and <laughs> eventually got it off. The way I got it off in the end was sliding this under the edge till I folded the lip over. Right, so we got the switch, tick, 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 and we just got to decide where we're going to do it. And I'm just going to put it here, which is kind of, that's the slot here. You can see my fingers kind of just to the end of the slot, but to the edge of this where the shape kicks up a bit. Just gives us a bit more room to get your fat fingers in there if you've got fat fingers like me. And I can't remember, let's see how the Atari ST lid goes. Uh, yeah, the lid looks like it just butts up to this edge, so don't push it right up to the edge. Give it a little gap, and I don't think you'll have a problem with clearances. And if you are worried about clearances, make your PCB slightly less wide. And you can hear me getting under there. And you can see it's all flopping around. It will settle, it will glue down. But you might want to go belt and braces. And uh, for me, belt and braces means probably just putting a bit of hot glue on that. So I might think I'll do that now. Let's do a bit of hot glue while we're here. 
I'm not even going to test it. We're going to hot glue it first. That'll, you know, then we'll be con committed that this will work. Is there anything worse in life than waiting for glue guns to heat up? If there is, I do not know what it is. Actually, you can see this is kind of firmed up a bit now. Just leaving it there, leaving it there. But it's a bit of a kick. It's a bit com too compliant for my liking. So we're going to put a big blob here. Boom! And I'm dashing it into that metalwork it's going to heat sink it massively and we're going to put another one here boom into that metal work nice gas glue guns they give you that extra temperature really it's really helpful for that i'm going to put a blob right here boosh and i'm going to put another blob here in this corner boosh right i think you're going to have to be pretty heavy handed to mess up that switch. The only thing that's left for us to do now though is really just put the case back on and uh, actually see if the bloody thing works or if I've killed my beloved Atari ST. Oh, <laughs> while I'm at it, I could see here that I've not, um, my drive uh, was flopping around too earlier, wasn't it? I'm gonna glue that down because I've kind of, I've got to know. <laughs> I should put screws in it but I've just got glue gun out. That seems good enough for now. Hot glue, everything. It's kind of undoable too, hot snot, isn't it? If you need to, it'll come apart. Let's get the lid on. You can see I'm getting the lid on before the glue goes hard in case I've uh, put the drive in the wrong place. Nice. The drive is in the wrong place, by the way. Annoying. Nope, there you go. We're in. We're in. We're in like Flynn. And I'm going to just flip this over, show you where that switch goes. Look, there's the switch right in there. A bit dark, but look. Hello. Hello, you. Your nice little switch ready to rock and roll. So we have the Atari set up now. We've got the Atari. It's mana drive with a disc in it uh, which is a magazine cover disc with neochrome and uh, we've got a gotek in here and i think it's on adam's family or something the switch is set to one position i'm just going to turn it on and we'll see what happens and we'll just skip the old memory test if i may um, incidentally, by the way, if you've got a GoTek, remember there's some jumpers on the GoTek to decide whether it's uh, master slave and things. If you if it doesn't work for you right away, don't panic. It might be just the jumpers on the GoTek. And if you are concerned, you can always electrically buzz out that those switches are good. So A now should be, I don't know, well, we don't know yet. Oh, A is the Kumana drive, and we should have on here somewhere Neochrome. That will be our proof, our sanity check is there. Neochrome, there we go, Neochrome V2 is on A. And then what we're going to do is click on Floppy B. God, I need my mouse mat. So we click on Floppy B and then you can see there's something here, Beast, oh, it's Altered Beast, Altered Beast. And what I'm going to do, just to show you, I'm actually going to now literally put my hand back down there and flip the switch. There you go, I don't know if you heard that click. So what will happen, if we click A, it should be Altered Beast. And there we go, Altered Beast. And then, like magic, if we click B, it should be the Neochrome disc. And there you go, that's it. Your Atari ST can now switch between the internal and external at will just by flicking that little switch. Isn't that a good old little project? That's a fun project, guys. That'll just take you, where are we? Somewhere in there. Um, couple hours work, tops. I don't think it'll be a couple hours, but yeah, it depends how quickly you can get into your PC or your Atari ST rower. And there you go. Like, share, subscribe, and as ever, come and talk to me on Discord. Bye-bye. <laughs>